is Tom from Inspiration My Works, and welcome to another weekly shop update. This is uh, episode 17. Um, quick update this week. I've um, got a lot going on, and I, frankly, I've just, just been juggling quite a bit. But uh, in this update, all we're really going to focus on is getting the chuck, the three jaw chuck, uh, serviced and back on the lathe and get it uh, dialed in. Now, I, I considered shooting video of every step of the way on how to do it. It's a three jaw, three jaw scroll chuck. Uh, it's made by Buck. It's actually a model uh, 2083R. Right? So it gives you a little bit of information on it. It is a, uh, um, an adjustable uh, setup where we can actually dial it in and, and get it trued up on the, uh, on the back of the plate. Um, so, what I really chose to do, though, uh, because there's already some, some really good videos out there. Uh, you know, Tom Lipton has, has done a great video on this. It probably covers everything. Uh, I just took some snapshots along the way, uh, you know, small little video vignettes of the progress, and then uh, getting it back. You know, I've got it back on the uh, on the lathe itself, and so I can, can show you that. But uh, I didn't go through the whole thing. I just wanted to show that uh, we've got it all dialed in. And in fact, the proof for me was that mandrel that we did. Um, I wanted to make sure that it was running concentric uh, on the lathe, and so I chucked up on the part of the mandrel that is, um, that is uh, going to be holding the, the disc, and I put a new cut on here, and we're now good and concentric. I was getting a cam effect on this previously, so something was out of whack, uh, but we're, we're in great shape now. I did not take video of doing that part of it. Um, again, guys, this was just kind of you know quick little update, but uh, I wanted to get something out there this week and uh, let you guys know what's going on. So thanks again. Sit back and enjoy the ride. All right, let's take a look at this, this chuck here. I'm going to put a neutral here so I can move this around. Um, first thing that we're going to need to do we need to get it locked in place so that they won't go in there. Just load here, there. Now, um, using our, our new spanners that we've done, we can go ahead and loosen. Notice that wood down there. This thing's heavy, and with my back being too, I can't really hold the stuff really well. So we just. All right. So there's our first part. Uh, I know you guys can't see that, but uh, we broke it loose, but now, again, it's still fixed in here, it's not coming off. So the first thing, you've got the draw part, so the part that locks it in place, and then the part that actually secures it um, onto, the, uh, onto the, the taper. This is an L0 spindle, so there we go. I don't know if you guys saw, but it, it came forward, and so now I can finish taking that off and uh, take that all the way off the rest of the way. Um, I've already done that. Uh, in fact, I'm kind of doing things out of order. I had forgotten the video of that. So let me, um, I'm gonna bring you in on a different angle and I'll show you what it looks like when we take it off, uh, identifying the spindle, and then bring it back on. Okay, so we've loosened it, got it broken free, and we can take it off the spindle. Now when we do that, Right, um, neutral here. Okay, so here's our. Oh, hang on, let me get something real quick. Okay, so uh, in identifying the spindle, it's pretty pretty straightforward, right? This is an American long taper, uh, L zero style um, method of uh, securing the chuck. Now, what's nice about this is, you know. Each size is different. You can't really mix up an L0 or an L1 or you know, L00 because the measurements are very different, right? The easiest way, you look at that key, it's 3 8 right? 3 8 key is only available on the L0, right? If I remember correctly. You can also measure your, um, the diameter, right? What are the threads? What's your thread pitch? All of these things are available in there. And you can see on this one, it gets a pretty good fit in here. Um, pretty good fit up and seals up nicely. I'm not going to do a whole lot with this thing right now. Again, my my back the way that it is, it's a little off. Um, 
Let's get that key registered up top. Get it in here. Okay, once that's registered, you can just start tightening it up. Okay, so we're on there and we're drawing. It's locked. Okay, so we're drawing the uh, the chuck onto that taper. Give it a couple of good wax in there. Just make sure everything's good there. Beat the heck out of the lathe with the. Okay. Um, I do kind of like the smaller one, to be honest. Ow. And that's why I like the bigger one, so you don't smack your fingers. But that's really it. So we get it in there, we tighten it up, and then the last thing really is making sure that that taper, those two tapers, have connected well um, and are seated properly. Um, and that's it. So taking this thing on and off, not a whole lot to it. You don't want to over tighten these, but we're in good shape now. We're running good and true. We went ahead and, and dialed it all in. So it's got four, um, so these four Allen uh, hex key kind of uh, bolts in here with a pin on the inside, right? Uh, that engages the back plate. And so you loosen the, um, the bolts that hold this to the back plate just enough to where you can make some adjustments. Uh, it's dial, you dial it in just like you would dial in a four jaw chuck. Um, look for your high spots, you know, get everything in place. Um, tighten it down again and then dial it in one more time. Make sure everything is there and then tighten it down. So I got it down to within about a half a thousand. Um, but that's, that's really it. That's all it takes. As you can see, we got the three jaw chuck off the bolt chester to um, do the service on it and uh, in doing that yeah I'm trying to trying to figure out a few things here it does appear that it's, it's made by Buck uh, it's a 208R which is the three jaw nomenclature would be 2083R um, so uh, it is also a self-centering chuck looks like um, this is, so it looks like we can we can true some things up here to uh, adjust it if I'm reading this all correctly, and I could be wrong here, so please, by all means, uh, chime in, let me know. Um, the other thing that I identified in all this, sorry, my back being tweaked, it's a little hard to move this around, but um, one of the things that I did is I also verified using dimensions that this is an L0 uh, spindle. And I measured on both the spindle and here to make sure that somebody hadn't tried to mismatch, but you can't do that with these, right? So the L series, the long American Long Taper series, um, if you had the wrong size, it just simply wouldn't you know, screw on, you know, screw in place because it wouldn't, uh, the thread size would be wrong. So this is an L0. Now you can see, even though it's marked on the back, you know, Buck Tool Company, Kalamazoo, Michigan, it says L-109. So at first I thought, hey, this is an L-1 chuck. And then I got to measuring. It's an L-0, definitely an L-0. Uh, so let me get a couple tools together and we'll start breaking this apart so we can clean it. All right, before I start breaking this apart, I'm doing a visual inspection on everything. I'm looking at the, the chuck jaws. I'm looking to make sure that everything's here. And I'm noticing already there's a couple of things missing. Um, one of the retaining bolts for the jaw is missing. There's also, get this around for you guys, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this uh, mounting bolt here is missing as well. So it looks like I need to order a couple of parts. Um, they appear to just be cap heads. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. Now, what I would like have a small impact driver, but I don't have the uh, Allen uh, the Allen heads for it. So <laughs> doing this by hand, I would prefer to use the impact driver, and I may end up doing that. Um, yeah, let me go. Let me look. Let me check with one of the mechanics here and see if he's got the right adapter for me. Hang on. Well, as I'm trying to get some. Oh, there we go. Cool. Uh, looks like part numbers on the jaws are 965. 
We had two of the three. This one is not budging. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I think I'm gonna need to get some. Uh, <laughs> we'll get some uh, penetrating oil and see. See what we can do. I'll bring you back. As you can see, we've made some progress here. So, one of these is missing. I'm going to have to find a replacement for that. But, uh, we've got the jaws disassembled, which you know, we've got everything, different parts there. We've got the jaws out. We've got the backing plate pieces, or the backing plate bolts out. And now we're just working on these, at which point we should be able to flip it over and begin careful disassembly. Oh, one thing that I'm not sure of, I gotta check on the manual. These adjusters, these parts that I think are actually to um, adjust the backing plate and true up the center hole. Um, I gotta see if I gotta take these out. I think I do have to take these out or at least loosen them before the backing plate will come off. But that's where we are so far. I'll bring you back later. Okay, got all the, the bolts out. It's nice as there's three different sizes, so you're not gonna mix that up. Um, I went ahead and loosened the adjusters. These are the centering adjusters. Uh, I loosened them and that took the pressure off so that I could then take the back plate off. Um, and so you can see, I don't know how well you can see it or not, but there are four, three, four, okay. Can you guys see that in there? Can't really tell if you can see it right here or not, but in this spot right here, and let me zoom you in, see if we can, you can see in there, I've backed it off a little bit, so each one of these, and you can see, not only has this not been serviced in a while, it's, uh, <laughs> let me grab a screwdriver real quick, just so you can see it. Is. I was concerned about this thing not running true. I was hoping it just needed service. Well, those are all chips, right? Chips packed in grease. So as you guys can probably see here, it's been a while since this thing's been serviced. Um, we'll go ahead, we'll get all this stuff cleaned up and I'll bring you back in a little bit. Thanks. Okay, well, I pulled everything apart. I pulled the uh, set screws out. Didn't need to for this, but I did anyways. Um, and got it. Uh, got the two sides separated, which is just now. Okay. Okay. I can get that straight. There we go. So here's my, my bag piece. There's the gear. Stayed together with it, and now we can take a look at the scroll, which looks pretty good. You can see, I don't know what you can see in here, but there's some, some dried up grease and stuff in here. But overall, the scroll looks really good and fairly clean. I think the biggest issue with the actuation was with how dirty these guys were and not the scroll itself. But at least this way, not only do I know that it's good and clean, but I'm getting a much better understanding of how the chuck works, how it all goes together. And I can do a visual inspection, make sure that everything is looking good. You guys can see that. And who knows, maybe it helps somebody else along the way later on. All right, let me get this stuff cleaned up and I'll bring you back later. Well, we found the culprit to a lot of our uh, motion issues with the jaws. Um, this one's pretty good. This one, there's some rust buildup in here. This one I just started working on. On this side, I've been taking the scotch brake pad to it. This side's still the way I found it, which is very, uh, it's not pitted, 
but there's definitely buildup on here. I mean, it could be grease buildup, it could be all kinds of things, but um, it seems like it's rust to me. It's fighting me a little bit when I'm trying to get it cleaned up. I don't know how well you can see it or not, but so I'm just using a scotch brite pad and getting that cleaned up. Uh, you know, safety first, wear your PPE. I've got brake cleaner and Zep floor stripper and all kinds of stuff that I'm using here. Um, so, gloves, eye protection, all that good stuff. Anyways, I'll bring you back. All right, so at this point we're getting everything lubed up again. Kind of doing a cleaning and reassembly at the same time, so I don't mix, don't leave things out. Uh, dry because you know, we are using some pretty cleaner on the caustic cleaner on this stuff. We don't want it to rust, right? So I have you know, this PTFE based lubricant that I actually got it for the back gears of the old South Lathe, South Bend Lathe, sorry. And, um, what I found though is that it's a very good lubricant, it doesn't run and it works well for a lot of different things here, but in this case it would be both to protect the exposed surfaces as well as make sure that uh, everything moves properly. So protecting the lubricant. This one back in here, complete with, I don't know if you guys caught that, lost part of my glove in there. All right. Good. I'm not feeling anything in here at all. It just moves nicely. No binding at all, but not so loose that it's just going to go flopping about either, right? So that's the, the nice part about this grease here. All right, I'll uh, bring you back later. So, got everything back together and uh, a dial indicator on a uh, piece of stainless run bar that I know is very accurate, but also it's only sticking out maybe you know, half an inch. And as you can see, I was able to get it dialed in pretty darn good. Um, I'm, I'm okay with this. A whole lot better than it was before. So, Chuck is serviced and accurate. Um, it's funny, you know, dialing in the truck was just like dialing in a four-jaw chuck. Um, but, uh, yeah, it worked out well. So, um, hopefully we can get things working right and trued up and uh, we'll get back on the IT7R project, the brake project. Alright, thanks for watching. Well, thanks again for watching. I hope uh, you were interested in this a little bit, um, get an idea about uh, how you do this. Um, again, I'll try and I'll, I'll see if I can find the uh, the videos that Tom has already done on um, servicing a scroll, a three jaw scroll chuck. Um, I'm pretty sure he's, if I remember right, I, I'm, I'm almost positive I saw him do this. Uh, I could be wrong. It might have been uh, Keith Rucker. I don't remember to be honest, but I'll go back and find that and hopefully I will either have that in as one of the cards that pops up or uh, as a link in the description. Uh, thanks again for watching, appreciate it, and we'll see you soon.